On the coronavirus, the number of cases in our area continues to grow. We are now seeing more than 28,000 people infected in the D.C. region. D.C. is reporting more than 3,200 cases now. 127 people have died. In Maryland, there are more than 14,000 cases. 631 people have lost their lives. And in Virginia, there are more than 10,000 cases. 349 people have died. 11 people have died from coronavirus at a Northern Virginia nursing home. We're told the Dulles Health and Rehab Center in Herndon has had 63 patients and 19 staff members test positive since March 28th. Virginia authorities have reported 91 outbreaks at long term care facilities across the Commonwealth, resulting in 78 deaths. And D.C. is opening a new testing site at the University of the District of Columbia Bertie Backus campus. That's across the street from the Fort Totten Metro station. It'll be open Tuesday and Thursdays. They're also expanding testing criteria to allow some asymptomatic people to be tested as well. There are also two new testing sites opening in Montgomery County. Testing began yesterday at the Wheaton Community Rec Center and on Monday the Up County Regional Services Center in Germantown will open as a testing site. Meanwhile, the University of Maryland Laurel Medical Center temporary expansion is officially opening. The hospital added beds, staff and equipment to meet the demand for coronavirus patients. The extension will be used only to treat patients who have tested positive for the virus walk ups will not be accepted. Here are the latest numbers nationwide and around the world. More than 183,000 people have lost their lives from this virus so far. That includes more than 46,000 Americans. 2.6 million people have been infected globally, but there is some good news here. The number of people who have recovered also continues to rise. And there's a lot of focus on first responders right now, but let's talk for a minute about the people who care for the ones we've lost, the last responders. Lorenzo Hall spoke with DC's medical examiner about life during a pandemic and the thing that's helping him cope through all of this. The bodies of those who die from the coronavirus in DC are brought here to the last responders, the city's chief medical examiner. We all say, man, we hope tomorrow is the last day. Dr. Roger Mitchell says the city began preparing years ago for the possibility of a mass casualty event, from personal protective equipment to more space in the city's morgue to handle nearly a thousand deaths. Thankfully, it hasn't reached that scale in the district. Let me be clear, um, it's very difficult to be prepared for something like this. Like this because there are still so many unknowns. At least 127 people have died from the virus in D.C. Mitchell says they've already performed several autopsies to figure out as much as possible about COVID-19 and who it's impacting. Our, our mothers, there are fathers, there are grandfathers um, from all economic backgrounds. It's not just poor people that are dying. Like me, you're probably wondering, how does Dr. Mitchell handle a job like this? When people ask me, um, you know, how are you doing? You know, I often say, Lorenzo, uh, better than I deserve. Uh, because there are a lot of people that are suffering. With so much to figure out, he says, show your loved ones how much you really care. Uh, call and check on your, your grandmother and your, and your father. Uh, drive by and honk. Meanwhile, Dr. Mitchell plans on releasing his findings from some of those autopsies in the coming weeks, hoping it will help lead to a vaccine or a better response to this virus. I'm Lorenzo Hall, WUSA 9. Let's get you caught up now on three things happening today. Members of the House are gearing up for a vote on a nearly $500 billion coronavirus relief bill today. The bill provides $25 billion for coronavirus testing, $75 billion for hospitals, and nearly $400 billion for small business relief replenishing the depleted Paycheck Protection Program. Now, the Senate passed the bill unanimously on Tuesday. The president says he does plan to sign it. A rent freeze bill in Montgomery County is up for a vote today as well. If passed, the bill would not allow any increase of rent until 30 days after that state of emergency is lifted. The bill will also prohibit landlords imposing any late fees, fines or penalties. New unemployment numbers are expected to come out later this morning. Estimates say some four and a half million people file for unemployment benefits in the week ending April 18th. That would be down slightly from more than five million the week before. Today's numbers are for the same week the government conducted its survey for April's employment report that could provide more insight into how negative April's job losses could be. And President Trump cited the growing unemployment numbers as one reason he put a restriction on immigration this week. He signed the executive order yesterday, and now that order puts a pause on new green card applicants for 60 days, although the president says that could be expanded. The order will not impact workers coming to America on a temporary basis, including a worker visa. This will ensure that unemployed Americans of all backgrounds will be 
first in line for jobs as our economy reopens. Immigration experts predict the order could impact hundreds of thousands of applicants for permanent U.S. residency, depending on how long it lasts. 437, many people are watching Wall Street closely today to see if the, uh, if the late rebound yesterday will hold. The Dow was up 456 points by closing bell. The Nasdaq added 232. The S&P 500 rose 62. Asian stocks have also risen today following Wall Street's rally and even oil prices recovering from their recent plunge to zero. The price of a barrel of U.S. oil to be delivered in June jumped 19 percent yesterday. But as Geo tells us, that slight uptick isn't much help from the stark drop that we've been seeing. We're stuck inside and not many people are driving to work. We're using much less gas, so oil demand has dropped dramatically and that's caused prices to plummet worldwide. But how's that going to impact you and what you pay at the pump? This week, the price of oil did something it's never done before. It went into the negatives, costing as low as minus $40 a barrel, meaning traders essentially had to pay people to take it off their hands. This is a really unprecedented event that uh, the refineries, I think, are scrambling to respond to. When economists talk about the price of oil, they're typically referring to the price of a futures contract. That's an agreement to buy or sell something at a predetermined price at a specified time in the future. And right now, storage capacities are brimming, meaning those prices in the next couple of months are dipping. At the consumer level, this is the best environment. It's low prices. You can go fill up your tank. Normally, low oil prices are something to be excited about. According to AAA, the average price for a gallon of gas fell to about $1.49 this week. They haven't been that low since the early 2000s. But because of the pandemic, how often are you filling up your tank while working from home? For most people, not a lot. It's difficult for anyone to take advantage of these lower gasoline prices if they're not driving. So there's no winner in this situation today. And with fewer people buying it, oil industry analysts emphasize there's nowhere for that excess oil to go. There is a limit to how much oil the world can store, and we're bumping up against the limits of storage capacity. That's led many countries to cut production of oil by millions of barrels a day. Reporting from home, I'm Gio Insignares, WUSA 9. Well, thank you. They are two simple words with one big mission. Sky 9 was over the scene as a caravan of cars drove past Mary Washington Hospital in Fredericksburg. They were honking, people waving, holding out signs. One big show of gratitude for the doctors, nurses, and medical staff there. Moments later, everybody looked up. Five Stearman biplanes flew overhead, finishing the salute. It's incredible. After Mary Washington, those planes headed for nearby Stafford Hospital and the Spotsylvania Regional Medical Center. And here's something you'll only see right here on WUSA 9. One of our viewers sent this video of the takeoff. Greg McCrary was part of that flying formation. And we, of course, thank everyone, everyone working on the front lines right now. We are so appreciative. And we want to continue to hear how your community is coming together during these tough times. Just text us your good news to 202-895-5599 and we might share your story live on the air. You can also tweet us using the hashtags in this together and get up DC. Time right now is 440 and